All right, so last week we, um, we, kind of, we stayed on the love message, but we took it into um, tongues because you know, I believe tongues helps us um, with the love message. In fact, Jude says, you know, praying in the Holy Spirit and you know, building yourselves up, keep yourselves in the love of God. So uh, tongues is a great gift for doing that. It keeps us, uh, uh, the way the Lord put it to me, is it like it, it heightens the boundaries to stop us walking out of the Spirit. Because Brother Hagen said to walk in love is to walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit is to walk in love. And praying in tongues just seems to make those boundaries clearer. And, and you sort of know, it's almost like you have to on purpose step out of the Spirit and into the flesh when you've been praying in tongues. Because you just, you just sense the boundaries a whole lot more clearer. Whereas Kenneth Hagin said, you know, sometimes you can start off in the spirit and end up in the flesh and you don't even know where you cross over. But I believe when you're praying in tongues, you know, you do know. <laughs> it's like you have to do it on purpose almost. So, so we, uh, we talked about uh, seven things last week. And I mentioned a book uh, Kenneth Hagin has out uh, on the subject of tongues. came out just a few years ago. Obviously, he didn't write it, but it's his messages. And they compiled it. So... Um, we're getting some of those into the library. I haven't read it yet, but I had a quick, uh, quick flick through. Christine finished it already. And, um, but I found that the seven things we talked about last night, he had identified those in his book as well. So I think we're on good grounds there. So just very quickly to recap, uh, seven things about tongues. Uh, the first one we found in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. When they spoke in tongues for the first time, we found they were speaking the wonderful works of God. Okay, they didn't know that probably, but the people that came from different dialects came and heard them speaking in their own tongues, and they were amazed because they knew these were Jewish people and didn't speak their language. So, but it said they heard them speaking the wonderful works of God. And so they got filled with the Spirit, and they began to overflow. And that's always a good, a good test for us is, you know, to know how full of the Spirit are we? Will, are we bubbling over? Are we flowing out? Is our praise flowing out? That's a good sign that we're filled up. Because God wants us to overflow. Amen? Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> so the second one is found in the Old Testament. There's very little reference in the Old Testament directly about tongues. But Isaiah 28, 11 and 12 uh, tells us about stammering lips and another tongue. And it talks about rest and refreshing Rest and refreshing, and uh, even without that verse, we all know, spending time speaking in tongues, you enter into a place of rest and refreshing. Eventually, sometimes it doesn't always happen as quick as you'd like. And I gave that example of a, I took some time aside a few years ago, and it was hard going for the first couple of days because God was shaving things off my life. And I gave the example of our house that we had to knock some bits down before we could build some bits back on. And God showed me how that worked in parallel. So eventually it will bring us into a place of rest and refreshing. I, I felt very tired this afternoon. I really wanted to sleep, but I wanted to pray in tongues even more, so I did. And I just came into such a rest and refreshing and place of strength. And it was just awesome. So rest and refreshing. The third one is uh, one we're familiar with, is edifying ourselves. In other words, building ourselves up on our most holy faith. And we found that uh, actually 1 Corinthians 14.4. He that prays in a tongue edifies himself. Okay, So edifying just means to build. Uh, the fourth one was keeping ourselves in love, which I just mentioned, Jude 20. Keeping ourselves in love. That means we can get out of love. <laughs> God wants us to keep in love and keep in him. Because love's the foundation for everything else that we do. Every time we minister, love is the foundation. Love is the motivation. And so it's important to keep ourselves in that foundational place, you know, because we want to minister from that. Uh, the fifth one is speaking mysteries. Uh, Galatians, uh, probably 1 Corinthians 14, 14 to 16 is a, is a good reference for that. Speaking mysteries. Galatians 1, 11 to 12 was another one. That was a reference to... Um, the Apostle Paul, when he said he received revelation not from the other apostles, he received it directly from God, two-thirds of the New Testament. And uh, most likely he prayed that out in the Holy Ghost because he said, I pray in tongues more than you all put together. So I believe that 13 years or whatever he had in the wilderness, most likely a lot of that was praying in tongues and he praying out the New Testament and interpreting it. 
and then writing it down for us. So thank God that he prayed in tongues more than us all. Speaking mysteries. But how many know we can continue to speak mysteries about our future, about our purpose, our lives, our families, etc.? Uh, the sixth one is, uh, my spirit sings thanksgivings. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 to 16, my spirit sings thanksgivings. It talks about the place of tongues in the church, that with my spirit I actually give thanks. And if there's those in the room that are, that are unlearned or uninformed about tongues, then we should also interpret those tongues in, in English as well. Um, so the seventh one was uh, intercession in the Spirit. Number seven, use of tongues, intercession in the Spirit. Okay, Romans 8, 26 to 28. That famous verse that we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, but we have to take that in its context. It says in verse 26 that the Holy Ghost helps us. We don't know how to pray as we ought to. But when we get Him involved, it says then all things work together for good. And so, uh, so we have to take that in its context. It's like Cole Stringer says, you know, if you take a, a text out of context, you're left with a con. <laughs> you're left with a partial truth, but not a full truth. Okay. All right, so that's the, uh, the recap. I thought I'd just do that because these ladies received tongues after the message <laughs> last Saturday. So I thought it was worth just preaching it again real quick for their sakes. Okay, let's go to our foundation text, 1 Corinthians uh, 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Tonight what I want to do is just whet our appetite a bit for the gifts of the Spirit and the supernatural. I'm not, not going to get into the gifts in detail tonight. I just want to whet our appetite uh, for them. So 1 Corinthians uh, 14. I felt the Lord must, must be pleased with our progress in the love walk because he's moving us on to the gifts. <laughs> so <Hallelujah. laughs> <Sorry>, really. <laughs> and remember we found in uh, Thessalonians that you know, he encouraged them in 1 Thessalonians to walk in love. And then two months later he came back in 2 Thessalonians and he commended them for their increase in the love walk. So it doesn't have to take forever. We can actually pursue love and, and get in on it real quick. It grows on you, doesn't it? You just find yourself wanting to walk in love. And, and less, you know, when you walk out of love, you, you just you want that less. It's like you just want to walk in love more and more and more. It's, it's addictive. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, I'm in 12. What's that? It is. It is, isn't it? Things just work. 1 Corinthians 14, I'll read it straight from the Amplified. It says, Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. And we must just add there too that this love is, is on the inside of us. It almost sounds from the Amplified like it's not. But this love is already placed in our heart, Romans 5.5 5 tells us. So eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest. So I think really love is our high calling. To walk in love, to live in love, to speak the truth in love. You know, really is our daily quest, high calling every time we get up. You know, make it a, a high priority, our great quest. And earnestly desire, so and, earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments or gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And so it goes on. So I mentioned the last couple of weeks, we've chose this verse because we don't want to just Say, okay, we're done with the power, we're done with the gifts, it's all about love now. Because the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says that love is the greatest, but it also says, and desire, spiritual gifts. Because we need this, these gifts to be able to love people the way God wants to love them. How can someone get healed if we don't have the gifts of healing in operation? God wants to build people up. Well, if we don't have the gift of prophecy, how's, how's that going to happen? And so it's not about either or, it's about love being expressed through the fruit of the Spirit and through the gifts of the Spirit. So we could almost say it like this, we could say pursue the anointing within that produces the fruit of the Spirit and desire the gifts upon to minister. Okay? In other words, pursue the anointing within and desire the gifts that come upon. Now I just wrote a couple of things down, I felt led this afternoon. I wrote this down. In pursuing love, 
we are aligning ourselves with the giving nature of the Father. Do you want me to repeat that? In pursuing love, we are aligning ourselves with the giving nature of the Father. Think about that. You know, that's God as a giver. Love gives. So when we come into that place, then, then we've aligned ourselves with the Spirit of God. In other words, we're positioned now to be a giver, to let things flow through us. Okay? In other words, we could de desire the things of the Spirit, but if we're not aligned to the Father's love nature, then we're probably going to make a mess of the power of God and the gifts of the Spirit. But when we align to pursue, or in pursuing love, we are aligning ourselves with the giving nature of the Father. And I believe as we do that, then all of heaven's resources are at our disposal. God is well pleased to let things flow through our lives because we've aligned ourselves with his nature in us. It is in that place of alignment that a correct desire for the things of the Spirit is born. Read that again. It is in that place of alignment that a correct desire for the things of the Spirit is born. In other words, it's born out of love. Pursuing love is that place where the, the, the desire, the right desire for the things of the Spirit is born. I'll be honest, over the years, you know, I've, in, in my zealousness, I've had desire for the power of God, but it hasn't always been out of a, a pure motive of love. It's always been from a good motive, but not always just from that pure motive of love because of God's nature. Okay, So it is in that place of alignment that a correct desire for the things of the Spirit is born. And uh, we'll go to Psalm 37 verse 4. Psalm 37 verse 4. I'll just hit it in the Amplified. Got a few things to do here tonight in the Spirit. Had, a, had an awesome time with the Lord. He just showed me a few things and a few people to pray over. Those that would like prayer and some words that came out. Um, Psalm 37, verse 4, and this is in the Amplified, it says, Delight yourselves also in the Lord. Or we could just say, delight yourselves in the love of God. Or delight yourselves in love. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. I hadn't seen the Amplified before on this, but I like that. It says, He'll give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. In other words, things that nobody else has to know about. Just things that God has placed deep in your heart that are really not for you to share. They're very private, perhaps about your own life or your own destiny that it's just not right to share, but God knows. And he says, if you, if you delight yourself in that place of love, then he'll give you the desires of your heart and, and fulfill those secret petitions. I think that's pretty cool. And I like to get in God's presence and just say, God, make... Your desires, my desires. Lord, just, just cause me to desire the things that you're desiring. Like praying for tonight. Lord, I just desire whatever you're desiring for the meeting tonight. Just make that the desire of my heart. Okay? Because we could all come up with desires. Easy. But it's, 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 when we're in the Lord's presence, then the desires, are, they're pure desires. They come from his love nature. And love heart, you see. And therefore, he wants to fulfill them. How many know there's some desires in our heart that shouldn't be fulfilled? <laughs> They're just our own desires. Maybe fleshly desires or far out desires, whatever they are. But no, no, those desires that are born in the presence of love, God will fulfill those things. God will fulfill those. Okay, let's go to um, Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. I just um, I got such a strong desire for the, the things of the Spirit. It's just like it's been, it's just come up again really, really strong. I think it was right for a season just to kind of lay, lay the strength of that desire aside for a season and, and just to get rooted and grounded in the love of God at a, at a deeper level. But it's like, I think the word that we received down at ICFM really... Uh, was about the anointing upon that just really stirred something up again. In fact, I'll, I'll play that to you later on if you're interested. Um, 
Habakkuk chapter 3. Not making it easy for you guys, am I? Habakkuk chapter 3. <laughs> if you sort of go to the end of the Old Testament and turn left, you've got your New Living Translations there. Habakkuk. <laughs> I remember one day years ago I made one of our singers on the platform sing this whole chapter. <laughs> he did a Robert, he did a great job too. <coughs> Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4. Speaking here about the presence of God, the greatness of God. Habakkuk 3 4 says, His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand, and there his power was hidden. Okay, his brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand, and there his power was hidden. In other words, the power of God coming out of the hand of God. You know, and sometimes people say, oh, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't seek God's hands. You should always seek his face. But, you know, I like what Bill Johnson says. You know, if you found his hands, just look up. <laughs> just look up. He's right there. It's, it's, it's the same person. <laughs> Don't get hung up about it, you know. <laughs> just look up. <laughs> But we know, you know, as we do seek the presence of the Lord, you know, his power flows out of that place and it flows out of his hand. And uh, so just right on the back of that, come over to Acts 4.28, just talking about the hand of the Lord. Acts chapter 4. It's interesting, isn't it, that, you know, he says, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, the power comes out of the hands, like flashing rays of light. Um, Acts, what do I say? Acts four, twenty-eight. Man, who's hungry for the things of the spirit? Oh, I'll tell you, I'm so stirred up. Acts four, twenty-eight. I can't wait to play you this word from from Pastor George. Acts four, twenty-eight. Um, remember, these guys had just performed a miracle, and now they've been threatened, and they said, you know, you guys, you disciples. We forbid you now to speak any more in the name of Jesus. We found your secret. It's using that name. and We don't want to see any more miracles, none of this radical stuff. So we forbid you from using that name. But they are very wise, Peter and John, because they went to their own company. They went to their companions and said, this is what's happened, but we're not going to stand for it. You know, we're going to come together. We're going to petition God. And we're going to even do more damage than we did before. And so in the context of that prayer, Acts 4.28 um, or 29 says, Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. I love that. In fact, I'm just going to get the Amplified because it, the Amplified says it the way that I like to say it. And I've, I've always said it like this, that you know, when when we're declaring the word of God, that we're literally stretching out the hand of God. That's and that's what the Amplified says. I just found that out today. Acts uh, 4. I like the Amplified. Yeah. Talks my language. Acts 4, um, 29 and 30. And now, Lord, observe their threats and grant to your bondservants full freedom to declare your message fearlessly while you stretch out your hand to cure and to perform signs and wonders through the authority and by the power of the name of your holy child and servant Jesus. You see that? Declare your message fearlessly while you stretch out your hand. So it's sort of like whilst they were declaring it, you know, God was literally stretching his hand out through their hands. That power to be released. And they performed great signs and wonders and miracles. Now I've been giving a lot of thought to, you know, the whole subject of signs and wonders. It really... It stirs some people up when you talk about signs and wonders. Some are just, they kind of want it, but they're just so overcautious about it that I don't think they'll ever get it. You know, it's like they could come up with 10 reasons why you shouldn't look for signs and wonders because the devil could throw you off track and things like that. And I think, that's, I think we should be cautious, but not that cautious. And, and I had to come to a place myself and say, Lord, you know, what should we expect? when it comes to the miraculous. You know, we've heard of different manifestations that you can't necessarily go directly to chapter and verse. And it's like, 
Lord, what should we really expect? You know, we come to a meeting, a believers' meeting. We want to see signs, wonders, and miracles. What, what do we have a right to expect? What should we, we be asking you for? And very simply, the Lord gave me the answer one day. Just so simply. And it's found in John 14, 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. I just love it when God has such a simple answer for such a big question. <laughs> And it just settled it forever for me. John 14. What should we expect? What kind of manifestations should we look for? And ask God for and walk in. Jesus just nailed it right here in John 14, 12. He said, for sure or most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And I thought right, that just settles it right there because Jesus said any of the works that you can read in the Gospels, that's what you're to expect. That's what you're to expect. Now that doesn't say that God won't do some unusual things like you know Jesus spat on the ground and made mud. That doesn't mean that God can't move on a variation of that. You know, of course it has to be the Holy Ghost. But basically, we have enough scope there, don't we, for a whole lot of different manifestations of the Spirit, different ways that God will heal people. We know that Smith Wigglesworth developed some of these different things, didn't he, by punching the odd person in the stomach, even drop-kicked a baby across a platform one time, and of course, they all got healed. You know, if they didn't, um, his name would be history, wouldn't it? And so, you know, we know there are some... There are some Holy Ghost variations, but we've got enough scope, just what's written, to keep us going, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> so what should we expect? We should expect whatever Jesus did, yeah. and greater than these, yeah. and greater than these. And he said one of the keys to this verse, well, the, 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 the biggest key is he who believes in me. Mm -hmm. and, and I like that because people have said, well, you know, you'll do greater works because there's more of you. But this, this scripture actually says he or she who believes. So it's not limited. It's not talking about a, a bigger group of people will do more works. No, no, it says he who believes. Let's just be plain with the Bible. He or she who believes will do the works that I do and greater works. Now, obviously, as, with the volume of the church, we're going to do more in number because there's more of us, but it doesn't stop an individual believing God to do the greater works. Now, the other key to that verse is he said, greater works these will do because I go to my Father. What was the significance of Jesus going to the Father? Well, we can read it further down. He said, I'll send the Holy Ghost. I'll send the Comforter. In fact, I'll just read a couple more verses in the Amplified. Uh, John 14, 26. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And desire the things of the Spirit. 14... 14 verse, uh, well, we'll go to 16 first. John 14, 16 in the Amplified. He says, and I will ask the Father, this is Jesus going, going to be with the Father after the resurrection, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, that's like a lawyer, strengthener, standby, that he may remain with you forever. Okay, so I believe that in verse 17 goes on to say the spirit of truth. So that's, that's the second key to that verse in verse 12, doing the greater works, is that we've got, we've got the Holy Ghost who's described in all those different words. And down in verse 26, but the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, lawyer, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and will cause you to recall, will remind you and bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. So believing, he who believes in me, but the other significant part of that verse is, is the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many know you can't perform a single miracle without the Holy Ghost? <laughs> you know, I love Brother Hagen because he would spend time and the Lord's presence, and God would just show him things ahead of time. He'd just see himself doing things quite naturally as part of a meeting or during a message or something like that. 
he'd just see himself doing certain things and when the meeting would come, he'd just simply act those things out and just see the results that would come. And I remember years ago, the first time that happened to me when I was on the, on the doulos, just, you know, getting a, scratching the surface of some of these things, but that desire was there. I just remember spending time praying in tongues and, and the Lord just beginning to show me people's faces and different conditions about people. And this was people I'd never met. This was people that didn't live on the ship. It's people that lived in Thailand or Taiwan or Singapore. And then you'd end up going to a church and you'd recognize their faces. You'd seen them in prayer. And they'd have the condition that the Lord had said. One, one meeting was unusual. The Lord just showed me as I was praying uh, before the meeting that a lady was going to just come from the back screaming and run to the front and hit the altar. I thought, that's unusual. <laughs> but that's exactly what happened in the meeting. And it was like, I think the Lord showed me that so that I wouldn't spin out, you know, because I was just very young in these things. And the Lord had prepared me, so I knew that was going to happen. So it didn't, it didn't throw me when it did happen. And so, you know, things, but, but see, in that, in that place of the spirit where there is no time or distance, you know, God begins to show us these things. And, um, but it's, again, we're just talking about that foundation of love, aren't we? You know, man, we, we just love people. We want to see God move because we want to see the love of God, you know, poured into people's lives through his power and through healing and things like that. Praise God. And so today I just spent some time um, with the Lord and he showed me a few things. But just before I do that, there was another scripture um, in John 15. We're right there. Go to John 15. See if I can find it. I know it's here in this chapter. Uh, verse 16. John 15, 16. It said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. Okay, now now this this right here is not talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Okay. This is talking about prayer fruit this is talking about asking things or demanding things in jesus name you know like be healed in jesus name or asking the father in jesus name this fruit here is talking about answered prayer it's talking about the fruit of ministering to somebody and seeing them healed and things like that so so there's a fruit of the spirit coming from the anointing within love joy peace etc but then there's also fruit that is born from the anointing upon you know, often when we talk about the fruit of a ministry or the fruit of a vision, we're not so much talking about love, joy, peace. We're talking about, you know, people getting born again and things like that, people prospering and being successful in their Christian life, that kind of, that kind of fruit, all right? So, so it's not just the fruit of the Spirit. It's also the results of co-laboring with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. All right, so pursue love. Make it our great quest and desire, earnestly desire the things of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're to do that. Some people are almost afraid to, I found, desire the things of the Spirit. It's like, no, no, we'll just play it safe. We'll just, we'll just go for the love. You know, if God wants to do the other stuff, then, you know, he can do that and then we'll know it's him. But no, 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 God says to have a desire for that. Why? Because he has a desire. Yeah. He has a desire to move. The Holy Spirit always desires to move on people's lives and improve people's lives. And he wants that desire to be birthed in us out of love so that we can co-labor with him. Amen. You know, if everything was left up to God or if it was up to God uh, to do everything, if that's how things work, then everything would be done already. Every person would be healed. Every person would be saved. Every person would be born again. But God hasn't set it up that way. God has chosen to co-labor with his people. And put us here on the earth. And that's how he's chosen to work. He said, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You'll speak my word. You'll use the name of Jesus and I'll move on that name and so on. So, so he wants us to actively desire these gifts of the Spirit. And I believe, you know, as we come together, we talked last week about edifying ourselves in tongues. You know, hopefully we get time in the week to pray in tongues and edify ourselves so that we can come uh, with a purpose and a mind to edify somebody else, to build somebody else up. Because really that's what the church is about, isn't it? It's about building others up. And so, um, I lost my train of thought now. 
um, yeah, we should, we should come, I believe, and desire the move of the Spirit every time we come together. You know, what, what are those best gifts? You know, if somebody needs encouraging, then probably the word of prophecy is going to be the best gift for that person. Or if somebody's crook, <laughs> then what's the best gift? You know, the gifts of healing and so on. So, um, you know, love will, will help us to desire what's best for somebody else, you know. I mean, we all have gifts that we probably flow in a little easier. We're a little more familiar with some, the working of some gifts than others, so it might be easier. But when we're in love, it's like, okay, God, I, I just want to open myself up to the whole nine. You know, Lord, who do you want to touch tonight? Whatever gift you choose, that's fine. You know, maybe not everybody likes to give a tongue, you know, a tongue and an interpretation. Sometimes we'd rather bring a prophecy, but sometimes the Lord will give you a tongue. And, you know, you have to believe God that someone will interpret or else you have to interpret it <laughs> and things like that, you know. <laughs> that can be scary sometimes. It's like you have the tongue and not the interpretation and you think, man, somebody better have the interpretation. I don't have it. <laughs> and then it's quiet. And, okay, Lord, give me the interpretation. <laughs> and, of course, he does. He does. But... Praise God. So um, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.